Good afternoon. Welcome to this week's episode of Safety Culture Solutions, brought to you by Safety Culture Strategies. I'm Mike Kinney, your host for the show each week. This week, we're pleased to have with us Dean Allring. He is with Atterbury Grain, and they have done an amazing amount of work on our safety culture. They are actually, they are one of the largest, I think, in the top five in the world, or at least in the United States, in what they do. And Atterbury Grain was founded in 1954. Since then, the company has grown into a dynamic business which touches several facets of commodities with over 60 facilities comprising over 160 million bushels of storage space located in the Texas Panhandle, North Texas, New Mexico, and Oklahoma. This makes Adam Mary Grain among the top five multiple grain companies in North America based on storage capacity. Whole piles, my granddaddy would say. Dean Alling, Director of Safety and Spatial Projects at Atterbury, is skilled at grain and industrial safety with an emphasis on fall protection, confined space rescue, yeah, safety culture, and policy implementation. Dean has a strong operation perspective with a Bachelor of Arts focused on mass communication and media from West Texas A&M University. Dean also prides himself on being a family man, father of four beautiful daughters and a wife of almost 19 years who's transcended from being his wife to his best friend. The thing Dean is most proud of in his career is a reputation for building a relational safety culture wherever it goes. Yeah, we're going to be exploring that today. His goal is to be an influencer of maturing real deal safety culture for his company and in the safety community at large. Dean, welcome to the show today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, so how are we doing today, sir? We're doing fantastic. We're hey. doing great. It's a great, great time in West Texas. Great time in West Texas. So yeah, I had met my lovely bride outside of around Granbury, south of Dallas, Fort Worth. So, yeah, yeah. As, as I recall in Texas, say, if you don't like the weather, wait 24 hours. Is that fairly accurate? <laughs> Sometimes you don't even have to wait that long. <laughs> well, again, thank you for joining us. And I tell you, the, just you and I chatting before at Atterbury Grain, you guys are kind of a big deal in this industry because obviously well, you got millions of capacity. Can, can you give us a little more insight on the company? Because this is pretty cool. Yeah, we've done, um, you know, we, we started with very meager startings and then um, the founder, Sam Atterbury, he's really grown it. But really, the you know the, their whole th point is all along. It's all about the people, the teamwork, and you know we have 120 employees, and they work hard. Um, a lot of them have been here for the whole th whole time, even sometimes coming to us as we acquired grain elevators. Um, you know they try to be safe. Um, sometimes they just need to know how to do it safely, and um, so I've. I've been welcomed with open arms. It's just been a great transition for me personally. And I, I think that testifies to the safety culture of Atterbury even before I came. That's excellent. And I find it fascinating with your degree in the communications because I've on my show before, I have, I avoid preaching whatever I can, but sometimes I get on my soapbox because I enjoy the view. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is that being a, help, a method to communicate the importance of safety function activities to senior management, that's a, that can be a skill unto itself when it's done effectively. I agree. Um, you know, it's, it's all about knowing your audience and making sure that you're communicating in a way that um, where they see the importance of it and where they can see their buy-in or where they fit into that. And um, if you don't know that audience, it it falls like a dead weight. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Because it'll just kind of want to you know, land on deaf ears, right? So from your perspective, Dean, what do, you, what do you view as one of your daily habits that's really helping the safety culture of your company? I, I just like to talk to our managers. And um, so it's it's about what's knowing what's going on. We might have a certain, um, you know, we might be preparing our facility for up, upcoming harvest. Right, right now that's what we're doing. Uh, we also could be um, cleaning out some old stuff, doing some maintenance, finding those things and just having conversations with the manager, what that entails, what's the risk involved in that and how I can help out by either stopping by and checking on things or um, giving some information or, you know, just being there just to help out. So that's that's kind of one of my daily things I, I try to do at all times. So. 
Excellent. So for your the senior team, what I call the C-suite, the people, the CEOs, CFOs, from your perspective, what's one or maybe two critical skills that they really need to get comfortable with to be able to sustain and enhance the safety culture of your company or any company? I, I think that you know communication is communication skills is very important. Um, Sometimes you have to be persuasive. Sometimes you have to be informative, but always you have to be able to know your audience and communicate what you're trying to get across. And, you know, that's the, that's half of it. But the other half is really listening and seeking to understand what aspect they're coming from and where, you know, what concerns they might have or what lack of knowledge they might have. And I think, you know, here at Atterbury, we've got a great, um, executive team that does that, cool. um, you know, there's, they, they seek to understand. I think one of the things that, you know, any company has to have is that communication skill. Absolutely correct. And some of the other guests we've had on, they say, you know, listen to, to learn versus listening, getting ready to argue because, because unfortunately in some instances that communication piece kind of becomes a one way street, if you will. So with, from, with you, cause you, you're, you know, I talked before and you said, Mike, I'm not a PhD. And I said, yeah, but I, I really like your style and I like what you're doing for your company. So who, when you kind of view back in your career Rolodex, who was one of the influential people that really helped you aim your trajectory that helped you to where you're at in your career today? I think, um, I had a guy that was a district manager is when I was in retail management early in my career and um so i i worked for a company and this guy really input he was really a true mentor he talked to me about time management and um with that making sure that i was doing everything i needed to do um he was big on stephen covey and so sharpening a saw making sure that you had home life taken care of as well as work life but really it was it's really about making a difference and talking to the people and by talking to them, listening to what they were trying to say, because you could discover maybe some areas that they didn't understand or maybe some areas that they need help on just by asking questions. And so that I've really taken that and have used that all the time, just asking questions. Um, sometimes I can learn more by a question than actually by looking at a report or looking at the execution of a program. Oh, absolutely. Great. One of the topics and great share that you and I've talked a couple of times. I appreciate all the opportunities to get to know you. And there's a few challenges I recall that you had to address as you came in the company and examining where you're at in the safety culture process. And you know, everybody talks about being an ongoing journey and some things you wanted to tweak. And I believe you had some conversation with people and you've been hearing that nobody cares. It was, I think it was words like that. Can you, can you kind of share some of that insight? Yeah, so when I came on, um, it was very much, they had no idea who I was. And so I always try to introduce myself and, you know, let, let them know who I am and cool. more importantly, who I'm not, because a lot of people <laughs> automatically look at a, a new safety guy. What's he coming in? He's going to be the safety cop. He's going to come in and tell us, you know, what we need to do and um, going to tell me everything I'm doing wrong. And so um, they automatically had that, even though they were um, very welcoming to me as a person, but um, they were very open to the fact of that a lot of times they feel like there was a disconnect. And, um, and that's, that's something I worked hard to overcome and I still am working hard to overcome, um, like for harvest season coming up, mm -hmm. just trying to get out there and just say, thanks for doing a hard job. You know, you're working hard and doing all this um, and trying to see, let them see that this, that this guy, that this safety director is going to walk out there and do, you know, and do that. One of the things that I'm all the time just blown away by that their reception of is um, if somebody's cleaning up a mess and I'm walking by, um, why can't I grab a shovel and help out? And um, that's something that when I do that, it just blows them away because they don't expect that. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're a team here Good at Atterbury and um, and I've really found my home here. I really feel like that this is a, a great, a great company to work for. But I think also that 
in, in any culture, in any business, mm-hmm. if you're not willing to get in the dirt and get dirty, um, you, you lose a lot, um, especially from the safety director standpoint. So, I think, and the phrase I stole years ago was dirty boots. Right? I, I tell all these directors and managers, yeah, put on your blue jeans, put on your old work shirts, and, and get your work boots on and go out in the field and just spend time with the people, right? Because, you know, and I undoubtedly like you, I've had to walk in some executives through an area and they have their suits on and they don't want to wear the safety glasses. Then they're kind of puzzled. Well, well people aren't very receptive to them being there, <laughs> right? And I'm thinking, yeah. well, duh, right? <laughs> you know, because if you aren't embracing what's going on, especially like the PPE, if you aren't acknowledging that it's important to you, why do you think really should be important to them? And please don't say it's, well, it's in the procedure says so. Well, that. Now we're probably drifting away from where we should be. And as I recall, Zell, one of the conversations you would have with people is this, you pretty much straight ask them what scares you most about your job. That's the best question I've ever come up really? with um, because it, it allows them to be real. It's not a real technical question. Um, so <laughs> it doesn't matter what, what stage they are in as far as they're learning. If I ask a manager, hey, what scares you the most? Or I ask a, a guy that's pushing a broom, in your job, what scares you the most? It allows me to look at what they need training on, maybe what I need to review and look at. Maybe there's some hazards there that we're not, um, you know, we're not um, meeting. Uh, but also it allows me to really connect to that person and, that, and show them that we do care. And what's intriguing is, for you to have the courage to ask that question and candidly your crews to have the courage to be very open because unfortunately with some of the older task people out there i call the task level they they're, they're working the shovels for a living for a lot of them it's rather hard to say they're scared of much of anything other than their spouse which i totally <laughs> believe <laughs> I, I agree yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so just, did, was there any hesitation to begin with at that strategy? Because I could see again, not that I'm discriminating because I'm old, that you know, with some older people, well, I ain't really scared of nothing, right? So did you have, did you notice some of that on the front end or, or how were you able to accommodate that? No, I, I really think it all started with you have to, before that they can feel safe enough to give you that information, they've got to know that you're willing to invest in them. Beautiful. So it's all about building that relationships and, and talking with them first. You can't walk up to a new guy and ask him that question without him knowing that you're going to trust the information or that they can trust what you're going to do with that information that they share. Um, so it, it, you had to do, I had to do baby steps. And so um, Good point. we're in that process now. And um, I, I'm really excited about where we're going as a company because that's really helped me out because now when I walk up, Guys are willing to walk up. Hey, Dean, I, I was thinking about you the other day. We were doing this thing, and it didn't sound right. It didn't feel right. I just want to ask you questions about it. Cool. And there might, be, there might be nothing wrong with it. Right. But he felt a little unsafe or felt thought about safety with that. And that's a win in my book, big win. And I love that phrase, feeling safe, because if you can build that camaraderie, and kind of have that safe trust when I get into the safety culture speak at the philosophical level. That way, when, when they go and talk to you and say, say, Dean, you know, I'm not real sure about this. They're not so concerned or they're going to go behind your back or their back and go rat them out to the big boss. Hey, th- this guy has right. no idea what he's doing because that, that could happen, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And also, I, I think with, with all investigations, with any injury or accidents or whatever else, it goes in the same play there is if, if I'm not trying to do a witch hunt, yeah, I'm not trying to find somebody that to blame. I'm trying to find what we can do as a company to do it better. So not only this can't happen to that person again, but not across the company. And that allows people to share a lot more freely as well. So, And that, that is a great pause. We're going to go to commercial break. We're going to be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a little bit of swag I get to show off today. We're going to be talking about a challenge coin that they have designed and how it's really helping them further enhance our safety culture. There's a great teaser. Don't go away. We'll be right back. 
Safety Culture Strategies provides world-class safety culture and safety program management consultative services for clients throughout the United States. Whether your company is pursuing voluntary protection program star designation, ISO 45001 certification, or considering a comprehensive review of your current safety programs and processes, Safety Culture Strategies brings hands-on experience combined with a unique perspective that readily translates from senior management to task level personnel. This collective skill set provides you with a very insightful health check of your overall safety management system that can also assist with reducing injuries and attrition as well as increasing profitability. Safety Culture Strategies is also certified to provide Ziegler Institute employee engagement training and leadership coaching. When combined with established relationships with federal and state regulators, Safety Culture Strategies is unique positioned to assist the safety culture efforts of any company. For additional information, visit www.scstrat.com or call us at 702-780-1410. After all, every company has a safety culture, but is it the culture you want? Well, I'll tell you what, for all our viewers today, I think you're getting a sense. This is a culture you probably want with, with what's going on at Atterbury Grain. Dean, we're going to pull you back up here. I'm going to quick draw this challenge coin. Number one, thank you very much. I uh, had the pleasure. I've done a lot of work for, on the military side and DO, D, some DOD work. And so I have a series of the challenge coins, and this one's high on my list as a keeper. And I think it's entitled Mission to Zero. Is, I th is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. That's correct. So, um, we uh, at, when I came on um, with Atterbury, they had a, a safety goal was mm -hmm. zero lost time accidents, and um, I, I I struggled with that, and uh, for a lot of reasons is because um, I wanted to have a goal to get to zero, and so um, we we need to st go on that drive, so to speak, and so that's why we did this mission to zero and. Um, I, I, we put this on the coin because I use this coin as a, as a way to spark conversations. And what do we need? What obstacles do we need to overcome? What things do we need to fix? Um, what conversations, trainings, whatever we have to have in order to get to zero accidents? And so um, this is this is all about that mission to zero. And, and I like the difference in your approach on mission to zero. And we've had numerous guests on, some PhDs, very talented people, and they always gives them a little pause if, if they hear zero inches is our goal because it then it, it can come across that the company doesn't recognize the potential for human error. I, You know, that, that was kind of my first take on it is mm -hmm. the fact of that, um, you know, if, you know, I, I brought up this whole story about when I was a kid, my mom gave me an allowance for taking out the trash. If I took out the trash all week long, I got on Saturday, I got an allowance. Well, on Monday, if I didn't take out the trash, technically I lost my allowance. So what was the incentive to complete taking out the trash? And so I had used that and um, our, I was talking with our CEO and he said, he goes, but Dean, if we do anything less, are we then just saying it's okay to have somebody get hurt? And we don't want to send that message. And so together we kind of worked on this and we came up with this mission to zero um, to get to zero um, accidents over the whole company. And that is a great approach because well, a lot of senior management, when they say, you know, zero injuries, you know, safety is always job one, it's really well intentioned. The downside is it doesn't, I think, hum humbly doesn't necessarily reflect reality. And again, this potential for human error distractions the list goes on so having the relationships like yourself the director level with the people doing the work starts accommodating some of that but yeah i am high on this message of mission to zero because then i think to me it it's one of the subtleties of the, yeah this is kind of an ongoing mission it's our ongoing commitment right but also acknowledging there is that potential for human error and we work with machines right and so they there break down all the time Things happen, and so um, unfortunately, sometimes employees are caught in that mix. But if we can continue to work on, you know, some of those things, we can 
we can narrow out or or kill so, so many of the um, injury possibilities out there. So, and and for our viewers, we appreciate he just said kill, but listen to the rest of the sentence. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. We're going Office for eliminate, but it's <laughs> that's right. That's right. Exactly. And, and naturally, the viewers won't be able to see the coin on screen. But I'm fascinated on the reverse side of that, Dean. There's, I think, five different elements that you guys collectively view as this mission. Can you walk us through those? I, I think that really, that really, to me, helped bound what mission to zero means to you guys. So. You know, on that one side that we have that mission to zero, we have one of our elevators on with a train and it says Atterbury Green. And on the other side, it has our uh, core values and um, their adaptability um, because we've, as a company, we wanted that as a core value. Things change at a moment um, with the grain industry, um, as well as sometimes we have to, um, I, I don't know how to say it nicely, but sometimes we have to force ourselves on other people and change your schedule. And so we have to be adaptable sure. for that. Teamwork, can, we always want to work as a team. Can you hold, um, have you got then, a coin there you can hold up for us as you go through it, Dean? Yes, sir. Beautiful, thank you. Yeah. Visual, yeah. visual so, aid. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's our core values there. You know, so we have teamwork. Um, as we go through our teamwork, we want to make sure that we're working as a team at all times. Um, we have, we have, culture uh, of safety that we have on here as well. That's one of our core values. And um, that was that way before they hired me. Um, and uh, it still is that way today. And we wanna make sure everybody gets to go home. Um, and then we have the uh, core value of integrity. We always wanna um, position ourselves in a, in a way of integrity that's with each other and with the marketplace. And that's with our farmers that we deal with and with our end users. And then we have work-life balance. Mm -hmm. and. Um, that's the one thing that I, a lot of people struggle with how they can put that in practice because how can you say work-life balance when you're asking me to work <laughs> really long hours to, to unload a train or, or work the harvest? Um, but I think it really is um, the ability for us to um, place an importance of that person's home life. Um, we have to know more, more about what they need. We have to allow allow and be flexible with that, with PTO and everything like that. Good. Um, during this last year with all the COVID and um, people's um, families and everything else, um, we wanted to be inv as invested as they wanted us to be or that they allowed us to be. And um, knowing that work-life balance is there and allowing people to have the time to take care of those things um, when, when possible is, is sure. really important to us. And then we're still looking for areas that we can show that work-life balance um, to our employees and show that that's a core value. It's always something that we're evolving on. And a lot of companies, Canada, they, I don't know if they haven't discovered it yet, but they definitely haven't communicated as well as they could, in my humble opinion, is that work-life balance. One of the groups I've worked with here in Las Vegas, they're a huge, absolutely huge, heavy equipment auctioneering house. And so they'll do about four auctions a year. Millions of dollars of this heavy equipment will go across their stage, so to speak. And when they go to hire new talent to come on board, they also interview the spouse and talk with them and say, okay, and there's going to be a certain time when they're going to be really long hours. Do, do you understand what we do? And just, so they want to make sure the whole family's kind of bought off on this. So when he's doing those 12 or she's doing the 12 to 14 hour days, things still going to be okay at home. That's something Atterbury does too on their high level employees is on their um, executive team is, is talking with those, but even, even at the managers, um, we try to get together with their spouses and allow them to understand, you know, that we care. And then also um, trying to do employee events that we involve the spouses. Just recently, we had a pre-harvest um, meeting. Um, it was really just a dinner and a get together in our North Texas region. And um, the area director invited all the employees plus their spouses. Wow. There was something special that they got to see cool. that and go out to a really nice dinner and everything else. And yeah, it was kind of expensive, but really I, I applaud them because this Absolutely. is really driving home that core value of, hey, look, we believe in work-life balance. Absolutely. One of the groups I've worked with here in Nevada, they provide a security protection service for, for a big NNSA site. 
and it takes a long time to graduate. They do a big graduation ceremony, and they invite the families. The families are in the photos. The families get to meet the senior team, right? And what your guy is doing, you're right on target. So just to, so I understand the coin. I, I like the phrases on it. So is this a coin then, Dean? Well, you prop somebody hands it to you, then you can just kind of put it on the shelf and forget it, or does it have more traction than that? Well, so um, I was trying to do something that would affect our safety culture. And I was mm -hmm. talking to a mutual friend we have, um, Bobby Jones, and um, yes. he had told me about an oil field company that had done this and um, how it was something that they used. And so as I as I talked, we kind of morphed this into what it is today. And so um, unlike military coins that are given for special occasions, everybody is special at Atterbury, so everybody gets a coin. Um, and that coin is given with three rules. Um, the first rule is, is that um, you must carry it with you at all times. Um, because I might ask you if you got it on you, and if you do, you might get a little little prize, a little $5 gift card, something like that. Um, second rule is, is I'm going to ask you some questions. And I ask that you be ultimately honest with me, because we can't change what we don't know. So if there's something I ask you about, and if it's a, maybe a little bit negative, go ahead and be honest with me because I want to affect, affect this and I want to change it. But I also want to change it for the entire company, not just for their facility. And the third thing I ask, the third rule is, hey, look, um, everybody has one of these coins, including mm -hmm. our president. Cool. And uh, Suzanne might be coming through one of your facilities. And if you need to ask her if she's got her coin on it. Mm -hmm. And um, if she doesn't, she's got to buy you lunch. Really? And when I told this to the executive team, they were awesome with it. They loved it. Cool. In fact, um, they caught some of our employees that didn't have it with them on their on the, in their pocket. And um, it was just a it's a great thing. And so um, I've got some guys that drill the hole in it and put it on their keychain, so they always have it. You know, and um, it's just it's it's great like that. Um, the one thing about this coin that I it, it's a great um tool it's help it's, i want everybody to get used to carrying it because i want it to be a fixture of atterbury but something that i'm using it for and i'm asking our management staff to use it for is to use this to create opportunities for knowledge and so Absolutely. i created like an acronym um spark a spark conversation um which is sharing purpose awareness at, or relevant knowledge and so sometimes um, we have to share the purpose of why we, why we're doing something um, to explore Excellent. explore and explain that why. Sometimes it's just about um, hazard awareness and hey, did, are you aware that this might happen? And then just relevant knowledge. Now I say all that, but it's these are questions and it's opportunities because I want them to give me the hazards they're seeing, the relevant knowledge that they have, um, and their purpose um, because. They're the ones pushing the brooms. They're the ones that are doing this. And so I, when I introduced this to, out to the company this beginning of this year, I told them I'd be asking questions, but I'm not going to be walking around with a manager and asking him. I'm going to be walking around with the guys that are pushing the brooms, that are doing this, the Good dirty work, because I want to know what they're scared of, what the things that they want to fix. And so I, I, you know, a typical thing is I walk up to him. I say, hey, you got your coin on you? They pull out their coin and they're all excited. I say, I got a question for you. So on that back of that coin, it says mission to zero. What are we doing Beautiful. right now Beautiful. that is deterring that? Or, hey, wow. on, on the core value side, it says teamwork. How are we winning Beautiful. in teamwork here at this facility? Or how? You know, what are some areas we could do better at that? And, and it really gets some great conversation going. Mm -hmm. But what I love is when that person is not scared to tell me the truth. Yes. And they tell me the yes. scary. They tell me, hey, look, we're doing this. And it's never as as scary as what they think it is. But at the same time, it's, it's very eye-opening that what they are focusing on at that moment wow. and what they would like to do. Um, wow. I had a guy at one of our facilities, and he said, you know, I sweep this around this conveyor belt all the time. I wish we had a different broom. And I went, that's easy. You know, it's just stuff like that, finding out those things um, that no one's going to has asked them those questions before. And this coin gives us that opportunity to do that. 
I think it's just fascinating. Again, with Atterbury Grain, you guys have grain silos, so the, the, the engulfment potential. You have conveyor ice systems, and not you you can have entrapment issues. So you're using this coin to look at this in a more positive fashion. And what I really like about this strategy is now you have people that push the broom. You know, now they're getting really confident to walk up to the president and say, excuse me, do you have your coin with you today? And then that leverages exactly. a conversation that may not otherwise occur. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's what it's all about is giving those opportunities for those conversations because those people are our team and they're our family and um, they are Atterbury, but also they are, they are the um, people that would be in harm's way if something were to go wrong. Wow. And so the best way to find that knowledge out and find those hazards out is by getting it from those people. Um, walking around with managers and yeah. stuff like that, they're, they're going to show me the shiny. They're going to show me the nice. <laughs> um, and uh, so th this is a way that I can actually yeah. find out a little bit. Well, you're to be congratulated. And I understand then you have like a, about twice a year you do a leadership conference. Yeah, so we've... Um, we try to get a, a leadership conference with all of our management staff, um, assistant managers, supervisors. And in that conference, we try to go over any critical ideas, getting people together. Um, this year, um, the, our first one that we did, because of some COVID issues, we, we were not able to do that. And so we're really looking forward to doing it again this year um, later on. And, and where we get some maybe vendors come in and do some trainings on stuff. Perfect. But really it's a time to get together. And I have this um, feature I use, it's called Shark Tank feature and ideas. <laughs> I just chum the waters with an idea and let them all go after. And I, um, at the I end of it. the deal, we're gonna walk away with a solution. And so, um, but it's uh, that synergy of everybody and in being involved in what we can, how we can attack this or what we can do. So. That is great. So to getting towards the tail end of the show, I, I always tease myself. I say, well, you, you, what are we going to talk about? Well, the next thing I know, you know, the show's pretty much over. But it's been fascinating to have you on the show with me, Dean. Before we leave, so you've been on like a national conference. You've done your 45 minutes. You've had some Q&A, and everybody's really enthused, the, throwing hats in the air, and that they got grain silos going off in the background for you. So as you go to leave the stage, what's two or three or maybe four things, hopefully they write down in their little notebooks to bake, take back to their company to help enhance their safety culture? I think the things that have been drilled into me from very get go is time management. If you don't label every hour, if you don't have a control over your time, your time's gonna control you. And it's you're going to miss things, you're going to not be able to cover everything that you need to cover. And any, any um, safety or executive of team has to have good time management. Um, You've got to educate yourself on how to better communicate with people cool. and never stop educating. Always learn how you can talk to this generation. Um, and that is relevant to what they need to hear. And finally, um, pick up a broom and get in the dirt. Nice. Um, the more that you can get out there and get, and get yourself in front of people um, and helping them out, you develop relationships, you develop um, key relationships with people and they trust you. They know you're there for them and you get to see a whole lot more what's wrong. You get to see that, you know, maybe we might have the wrong broom that they're using, or maybe, um, we, we can do something better for them. Um, maybe their process need to be changed, but you're not going to see that from an office. You're not going to see that from walking around in your penny loafers. You've got to get out and get busy. So, that's it. Right on target. So where can people learn more about uh, Atterbury Grain and all these great programs you guys have? Well, Atterbury Grain is, um, we have our own website, and um, so you can find us on there. Um, I also, also, I do a lot of posting on LinkedIn, so okay. um, friend me up there. Um, I, I'd love to do videos and postings up there, and so we're doing that all the time. So. Thanks. Well, Dean, only once again, we can't thank you enough for being with us. Atterbury Green, I really like your Mission to Zero Challenge coin. I want to thank you for offering one up to me. I carry it in my pocket all the time. And I don't have them all memorized yet. So my goal is when I bump into you somewhere, you say, Mike, do you have your coin? That way, maybe you owe me lunch. <laughs>
<laughs> That'll be great. And thank you again. You, you have a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes th this episode of Safety Culture Solutions brought to you by Safety Culture Strategies. Learned a lot about a unique approach with a challenge coin. And maybe that's something you, you could consider as well. well. Lots of ways to get a hold of me. I'm at 702-780-1410. Website's www.fcstrat.com. Email, there's a shocker, Mike at fcstrat.com. Dot com. Look forward to speaking with you, sharing ideas. Like maybe you want to be on the show, you're looking for somebody to come in and help you maybe jumpstart some of your initiatives or just come out and talk to your people. Always look forward to the opportunities. Until next time, enjoy your safety culture journey.